Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Jocelyn Nicholas, and I'm a realtor. I'm a realtor in this area, Kitchener, Waterloo, Hamilton, Guelph is where I specialize. Um, I actually work in this area because I started as an investor. So my husband and I have been investing in real estate for the last 10 years. And in the last 10 years, we've bought properties in Hamilton, Guelph, and Kitchener, Waterloo. We used to have some properties in Niagara as well, but we've sold our portfolio just because of the distance uh, compared to where we live. So we've had to let go of that portfolio. And now we own properties closer to home, which is like, you know, within an hour radius from where we live. Anyway, so in the last 10 years, that's what we've been doing. I started out as a, an economist. That's what I studied. So I used to work for the Ontario government. But over time, as we were buying properties and our friends and family wanted to learn what we do, um, they started asking me to help them. And that's how I got my license. And then eventually because it was something that I enjoyed so much, I decided to stay and do this full time. If I had to pick a superpower, it would be to uh, build wealth through real estate. And the reason I say this is because it's one of those things that I'm very passionate about. Uh, we've been able to do with, you know, with us, with our clients, with our family and friends, those around us. So if anybody, I know today we're talking about buying a home uh, in Kitchener, Waterloo, Guelph. However, if you're passionate about looking at real estate as an investment vehicle, please let me know. Um, that is something that I can also help with. Okay. All righty. Okay. So today we'll be looking at a quick market update. We'll look at, you know, interest rates, where they're going. We'll look at affordability, home prices. We'll look at demographics uh, in this area, Kitchener, Waterloo, Guelph. Um, we'll also look at some top employers if you're looking to move here. Uh, we've had a lot of people actually move from GTA and move into the Waterloo, Wellington counties. We'll look at some of the top neighborhoods. We'll look at the best schools. We'll look at some universities that we have here. And then we'll look at some commuting options. So if you have any questions uh, about those, uh, those, please let us know because um, this is a topic that we've been covering for a few years now. And, you know, I only have an hour to cover so much. So if there's something that I don't cover in the presentation, please let me know. I'd be happy to cover that. We also have a personalized home, personalized home search too. Please let me know if that's something that you're interested in. And I'll be happy to send it to you where we can automatically set it up and you get options, homes. You can customize it to your liking um, and you get to look at homes. I recommend it to my clients as a way to get to understand the market and to also understand what your money is worth. So then, you know, if you're interested in a particular neighborhood, you get homes, you get to see what things actually cost. And that will help you, I guess, as a way to educate you about what, what the market is doing, what your money is worth. Okay. Alrighty. So starting with inflation, we got some good news. Um, for those who are always tuning in in the news and looking uh, to see what we're doing uh, economically. Yesterday, a new number came out with our inflation saying that inflation has gone down to 2.9%. In the last couple of months, it was fluctuating as you can see in the graph. Um, the peak we had was around 8%, but it's been going down steadily. However, around the holidays, I think because people are shopping, people are buying gifts, and the months um, before the holidays, we saw inflation go up to 4%. That was a concern. It started coming down, um, and it went up and down. And now we have you know, a 2.9% um, inflation, which is very good because the Bank of Canada is usually targeting the inflation rate to be around 2%. And now it looks like we're going towards that 2% mark. The Bank of Canada, as well as politicians, you know, if you hear Justin Trudeau yesterday, he was just saying that they he thinks rates will start to come down before the end of the year. Um, when we talk to professionals and economists, um, a lot of people are predicting that we may see a rate cut somewhere in April or June. So mid-year, so to speak, like mid-2024, we should start to see those rates come down. However, that being said, the Bank of Canada has insisted that has insisted that, that is not a guarantee. It will depend on how the economy is doing. 
Uh, given my background as an economist, I'm also always looking. So I've noticed too that our economy is much weaker than it was a year ago. Uh, in terms of like job numbers on our GDP, we're starting to see that these trends are moving in the direction that the Bank of Canada want, think, wants things to go. So I wouldn't be surprised if let's say come June, rates start to go down. Okay, so this is where we are with our rates. Right now we are at 5% overnight uh, lending rate and it's been going up steadily. One of the reasons why I like to show this, this graph is to show you know, if things come down, how quickly they come down. So you see actually, um, we have another graph that has more data. Um, I'll see if it's in this presentation. But one thing that we've noticed for sure is that when rates start to come down, they come down quickly, which means in a you know in a period of a year, um, it's predicted that we'll have much. In a period of a year, our rates could come down significantly. Uh, from what I've heard and from what economists are predicting, uh, they're predicting a two point five percent rate by the end of twenty twenty five. That's pretty good because, for example, that means that for somebody who has a 6% rate for a mortgage, that could come down to, let's say, you know, 3.5 or something like that. Okay. So, you know, that's good news for especially buyers, people who are looking to buy. Um, another reason I also like to show this graph is for people who are buying like yourselves. Um, one of the questions that we get is, should I get a variable rate mortgage or should I get a fixed um, rate mortgage. And looking at this graph, uh, you'll see that this is the highest rate we've had at least. Um, I'm sorry that we don't have uh, the graph that has more data, but one thing that we've seen for sure is that this is the highest rate we've had in 22 years. So if you lock in at 5%, you're locking in at um, one of the highest rates that we've had in 22 years. And I've seen people who are locking in for five years. So for the next five years, you're gonna have the highest mortgage payment we've had in the last 22 years. I don't think it's a wise decision. So if you're speaking to your mortgage brokers, or if you're speaking to the bank, make sure that you get an option that allows you to take advantage of the, you know, the market conditions we're in right now. I know that the variable rate is very extensive, but you have to think of it as, you know, pain for now, but something that's gonna get better, hopefully within the next few months. If you're not comfortable with variable, cause I know a lot of people have been burned but, you know, there's a reason why that rate is higher is because the banks know that rates will come down and, you know, if they can charge, you know, they can discourage people from getting that rate, then they get to make money in the long term. Okay, so you can also set off like one year terms or two year terms. Uh, that is a discussion that you have to have with your bank. Make sure you're asking these questions, because a lot of the times we as consumers, we accept whatever is put in front of us without questioning it. But, you know, you being here in a webinar and learning more about buying a home, I would assume that you're the kind of people that care and want to dig deeper and find information. So do ask your banks to see what other options they have for you. I would discourage anyone who's locking in right now for five years, because for the next five years, you're gonna be paying the highest rate we've had in the longest time. And I don't know if that's a wise decision, okay? Um, looking at the trend in terms of where prices are going, you can see the fluctuations. Uh, we have data, um, you know, starting in 2011, you can see that prices have been going up and down over um, the last few years. And even if we were to bring up data from like, you know, years ago or from the 90s and 80s, you definitely see that the Canadian and Ontario market to be specific, our market fluctuates up and down, but the upward trend that the long-term trend is always upward. For example, if you see here, uh, you'll see that we've had a few market co corrections. We had one in 2017 where prices, um, there was a little bit of what people considered a bubble. And then of course, um, prices came down, market was corrected. But you'll see that even for that person who bought uh, in 2017, they are much better off now because that, pro that property has gone up. So if you're looking to buy a home, um, to move in, uh, you over over a long term trend, um, the property will always go up. up. You always have appreciation. So if you are to think of it as an investment, uh, there will always be a benefit to buying a home as opposed to waiting and buying in the future. 
You can also see this big bubble that we had in 2022. The peak of this bubble was around February of 2022, and that's prices were so high. But since then, prices have corrected. You can see that prices have come down. Another thing that I want to bring to your attention is the relationship between rates and prices. So you'll see here that when prices came down, uh, somewhere around like the this bottom here was around April, uh, they announced that they're gonna stop raising rates. If you remember, we had two phases to this rate hike. So we had a phase when the Bank of Canada stopped raising rates. So as of May and June, prices were going up again. In fact, I remember like uh, I have clients who bought their home at the bottom, which was like somewhere in March, and then they sold theirs in May. A difference of two months, you can see how much of a difference it made there. And uh, and of course, when they started, re and I think the Bank of Canada realized quickly that you know the demand is there and they need to do something to keep prices low on the home um, for homes, and they started raising rates again. So when they started raising rates again prices started going down again. Right now, as we're speaking, um, we're seeing that the market is becoming more active. I would say if I compare uh, December of 2023 to January of 2024, transactions have picked up. And we're starting to see multiple uh, situations, especially uh, for people who are buying around the university, because that's all the parents who are buying student rentals, because, you know, their kids are about to leave residence. So we're seeing multiple offer situations in those cases, but also for homes uh, in general, homes that are not around the universities, we're starting to see that consumers are coming back. People are feeling more confident again. And one of the reasons for that is all the talk about potentially lowering rates. So people are starting to come back in the market. Um, when we look at a year over year uh, data, we're looking, we're seeing that in January of 2024, we had 22% more transactions than we had in January of 2023. So we can definitely see that people are becoming more confident again in, in our market and uh, they're coming back. What I'm seeing also is that um, people who've been waiting to make a move have waited for so long to the point where they can't wait anymore. We have clients who, you know, they wanted to wait and see where this goes, but it's been two years already and they really would not want to stay where they are. And now those people are so tired of waiting that they're making a move, you know, now. So what we're expecting in the next uh, few months is that we'll see definitely more inventory on market. Uh, go to the next. So right now, as you can see, uh, this is the number of homes on market um, on a monthly basis. And you can see right now, um, even though people are saying we have so many homes on market and um, and that, you know, like it's a buyer's market. The truth is it's really not much of a difference as we had um, in the years preceding the pandemic. You see here that when we look at number of homes on market, um, in 2021 and 2022, we had the lowest number of homes on market. So people are comparing um, the numbers that we have now to the pandemic numbers. And what I'd like to mention or what I always tell our clients is, you know, if you look at normal, like what is no, what normal is, in fact, if you look at like before 2016, our inventory, our inventory levels are much lower than what we had in those years. So there's nothing abnormal about now. And, you know, that buyer's market that we've been expecting, we've been waiting for, doesn't really happen very much in Ontario. So in Southern Ontario, we don't really get that true definition of a buyer's market. However, what we have now is an opportunity where the buyer gets to do their due diligence. Because what we had um, in 2021 and 2022 was almost, I would say, unfair to the buyer because most buyers would go in there uh, without having to think twice about the decision they're doing, uh, they're making, without having proper time to do home inspections or verifying that their financing is actually going to go through, people were just jumping at the opportunity to own a home. But right now, we have enough inventory in the market that allows the buyer, I would say right now is the closest we've come to a balanced market. Still not balanced by definition, but it's the closest we've had because now, you know, we're seeing people do inspections. We're seeing people take their, you know, couple of days to, you know, get um, financing arranged. We're even seeing people have a condition on the sale of their home. 
You know, we sold, we've sold a couple of properties like that where um, the buyer had a condition to sell their home. That is something that would have not happened in the 2020, 2021 to 2022 era because the demand was too high and there was more buyers than there were sellers. So that's basically what we're seeing. Um, as I said, for those who are looking to buy, we're expecting inventory levels to go up in March, April, and May, because that is when spring market starts. So if you're a person looking to buy a home, I would say get your I'd say get your finances in order and get clear of what you want before this spring market comes in. Because a lot of the times what happens is people find the home they've been looking for and they're not ready. They don't have their financing in order or, you know, maybe something they're waiting on something or maybe the down payment is not even in Canada. We've had situations where people are getting money from abroad. I'd say if you're one of those people who are thinking about buying something, get all those things ready because I know that, you know, come March, April, May, we'll definitely see more inventory and more options in terms of um, what people can buy on market. Okay, so talking about Waterloo Region and Wellington counties, um, our household income usually is higher than that of the national average. So as you can see here, um, this is Waterloo Region, and Waterloo Region includes uh, the city of Waterloo, the city of Kitchener, the city of Cambridge, and the townships around it, okay? And then we have Wellington County, which is the city of Guelph, and then we have Fergus, um, Guelph Aramosa, Rockwood, and all the other uh, center Wellington, the townships around um, Guelph. Most people who are coming to Wellington County will come to Guelph, but this is basically what our income is, that uh, these are cities that have, uh, on average, higher income than what uh, the rest of Ontario looks like, um, as well as higher income than the rest of Canada. In terms of population, I also find this interesting uh, that, you know, of course, we know that the Canadian population is growing. Um, right now, we're seeing that it went up by 5% uh, between 2016 and 2021. On average, I'd say like, our, our, um, our population goes up by a million every year. Okay, so we're seeing though that the majority of those people are ending up in, you know, in Ontario, of course, like, you know, uh, 5.77% as compared to 5.24. However, what's interesting, look how fast Wellington County and Waterloo Region is growing. So we're growing much faster than, you know, our Ontario uh, population as well as Canada. So which means majority of those people who are coming in, they're coming to Southern Ontario. And I know that that is not a surprise. Most people probably already thought that that was the, the, the trend, but now you have confirmation that, you know, our region is growing much faster than the rest of Ontario, um, as well as Canada. This is good. Uh, and it could also be bad, especially for people who are looking to buy homes. This also means that property prices will go up over time because if we're seeing that most people are coming to to this region the demand for homes goes up and the higher the demand the higher the price okay so now um this could also be a good thing because we're seeing that a lot of people who are coming um they're, they're creating a, you know a, a lot of the, we have a big tech industry in this region uh so we're seeing a lot of those people come and creating jobs you know um companies and we're seeing a lot of the big companies, Google um, and, and, and the big companies alike come and set up shop in Waterloo region. That is something that's very good for, for our region, for sure. When we look at crime rates, uh, we can see that crime of course is going down, but what's interesting is that in this area of Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge, uh, our crime rate is much lower than that of, than the national average. So. Um, this is good for families that are looking to be in a safer um, neighborhood, safer area. When we look at even our neighborhoods, for example, like looking at Wellington County, we don't even have those like rough neighborhoods that you would expect to see um, in, in some of the cities. So this is definitely something good for families and those who are looking to be in areas that are quieter and less crime in general. So when we look at the top employers in this region, um, a lot of the jobs are coming from manufacturing 
And we also have education. We have a couple, uh, at least three universities and a few colleges. And then we have the insurance and financial sector. Manual life is in this area. Uh, we have healthcare and social assistance. And then, of course, we have government services. Guelph uh, is actually big with government services because um, we have the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture in this area. And of course, we have the other ministries as well and other smaller offices around. Um, but um, these are some of the top industries where people are getting jobs. And then, of course, we have technology, uh, artificial intelligence. As I said, there are a lot of um, tech companies setting up in Waterloo, as well as just the, actually, I was just reading an article a couple of days ago that talked about the Toronto Waterloo Tech Corridor, so corridor between Toronto and Waterloo along the 401. And this is the number one tech, the fastest growing tech region in all of Canada, which is really impressive. Okay, and of course we have retail. Uh, continuing on uh, top employers, uh, we have four urban areas. We have Guelph, uh, we have Cambridge, Kitchener and Waterloo, and we're all along the 401. So for those who are looking to commute back and forth between Toronto um, and Waterloo, or even if you're going to London, um, there's definitely neighborhoods that are so close to 401 such that you can get to the 401 within a few minutes and commute to um, the city that you'd like to be, uh, that you'd like to go to. Uh, we also have the innovation district um, in Waterloo, and that is also very tech um tech centered. We have the accelerator center, uh, the research and technology park, community tech, velocity. All these, these are all companies um, and establishments that are set up to support that tech growth that's growing in this area. So if you're somebody who's looking for a tech job or you, you know, tech background and you want to be somewhere in a region that's one of the fastest growing, this is definitely a region for you. Um, and of course, we have multiple shopping centers where uh, people can work in, in retail. Uh, when it comes to transportation, as I was just saying, we have the Highway 401. Uh, this gives um, commuters access to Toronto and the greater Toronto area, as well as if you're looking to go west to London, that is also um, a possibility with the 401. Uh, in Waterloo region, we just got a new light rail transit. And this basically uh, is a 19 kilometer light rail transit uh, that's being built in two phases. Phase one is already done in Waterloo region and phase two will connect Cambridge to Kitchener Waterloo. Okay, so we have frequent and regular local bus network. Uh, for those who are looking to take the bus, you definitely can be in neighborhoods that allow you to take a bus everywhere. Okay, and then we have uh, daily trains to Toronto and buses to Toronto on a 30 minute basis. So I think there's probably a total of nine uh, trains. Um, last I checked actually, there's, there's a bus or a train going to Toronto every 30 minutes. So if you miss the one, you can always catch the next one within 30 minutes. Uh, the average commute time is about 22 minutes. Um, let's say 23 minutes if we round, round it up for local residents. That's, this is one of the reasons why I moved to this region because we tried to you know, see if we can live in Toronto, but we know the traffic that's in Toronto. You cannot get anywhere within 20 minutes, right? So because of that, you know, Locally here, you can literally get anywhere within 20 minutes. And I just like that saves me so much time. And at the same time, saves so much money with gas sitting in the traffic all day. Okay. And as I was just saying, there's a future plans to expand uh, the LRT in Cambridge, as well as the highways. There is a highway that um, the government of Ontario has been talking about um, building a highway between um, Kitchener and Guelph. So that is... That is somewhere uh, where the government's trying to figure out how to go about it, but there's definitely future plans to expand this region. And also being one of the regions that's growing the fastest in Ontario, we'll definitely see that investment come in infrastructure, roads, um, creating more jobs, and of course, boosting our economy over time. So just to see it uh, on, a, on a map, uh, these are the cities around uh, Kitchener, Guelph, and Cambridge, and you can see uh, this is where the red line is the 401, 
that highway that I was just talking about. And there are neighborhoods that are so close to the 401 that within a few minutes, you can definitely jump on the 401 and um, go to Toronto easily. What I also love about being in this region is how close we are to a lot of other cities. Like if you're, for example, in Guelph, uh, you're so close to, you're within like 30 minutes to Milton and Halton Hills. You're so close to Fergus. You're so close to, to, to uh, Oakville, Burlington. You can go to Hamilton within, you know, 30 minutes from Guelph. So I just like how close we are to everything. And of course, if you're in Kitchener, depending on which neighborhood you're in, you can also just quickly jump to uh, the 401 and go to Toronto within an hour. Okay. Uh, this is the train that I was just talking about. It takes approximately about um, an hour, 50 minutes if you're coming from Kitchener. But we do have um, we do have train stations. We have one in Kitchener. That's where uh, the first stop is. We have another one in Guelph. And then we have another stop in Acton. Acton is in this area, like close to Rockwood. And I think from there goes to Georgetown, uh, Brampton. So there's a few stops that, you know, for those who are looking to commute back and forth between Kitchener and Toronto, you're looking definitely at approximately two hour commute every morning. And um, a lot of people are doing this commute. Actually, my husband used to do that because he used to work uh, for Metro Links in downtown and he would take the, the, the train all the way to the Union every morning. Some of these um, stations have parking, free all day parking. So you can do some research and see what would work for you. If you're a person who's moving from Toronto and coming this way and you'd like to commute on a daily basis, you can definitely look to see what your path to work will look like over time. And this is the LRT that I was just talking about. Right now, what we have is a train that goes from Fairway. Uh, Fairway, uh, this is a mall that we have here, and it goes all the way to Conestoga, which is also another mall in Waterloo. So this is Kitchener, and this is Waterloo. And there are plans to expand the LRT to go from... Um, from this line here, Central Station, which is downtown Kitchener, all the way to Cambridge. Okay, so when we talk about the top neighborhoods, um, I like to take a minute and say that top neighborhoods will depend on a few things. It will depend on what you want as a buyer. But these neighborhoods that I have here are the most popular. So this is top neighborhoods by popularity, okay? However, it also depends on what you're looking for. For example, when we look at Guelph, we're looking at Pine Ridge, uh, Westminster Woods, we're looking at Hanlon Creek, and we're looking at Coldray West. One of the reasons why Pine Ridge is, is one of the popular neighborhoods in Guelph is because it's newer homes. So for those people who are moving here and they want to have a newer home, um, most of these homes are under 25 years old, but there are this is an area that's still growing. So if you're looking for a home that's one year old, two years old, most likely you'll end up in the south end of Guelph, which is this Pine Ridge neighborhood. However, if you're looking for a home um, that has a big backyard, one of those bungalows that you know you need to renovate, add value, or even buy it, renovate it, then Pine Ridge will not be a good neighborhood for you. In that case, we'd have to talk and see what works better. Um, for what you're looking for. Um, another thing too, like if you look at the Hanlon Creek uh, neighborhood, as well as Coldray West, these are closer, uh, also Pine Ridge too. These are closer to um, Highway 6, which takes you to 401. So for those who are looking to commute, these would be good options. When you go to Waterloo, we have Beechwood and we have Royalwood. Um, one of the reasons why these neighborhoods are popular is also because of the schools that are there and some of the most popular schools are in these two neighborhoods in Waterloo. When we look at Kitchener, we're looking at Dune South, we're looking at Huron Park, and we're looking at Chicopee. Uh, when Dune South is probably one of the most popular neighborhoods in Kitchener for two reasons. One being that it's just off of the 401. So literally you can go from like, and this is like closer to the area where um, Conestoga College is. So if you're looking to commute back and forth, this is a good option because the 401 is right there. But it's also like, these are good neighborhoods, right? Like homes, like the quality of residents there um, is 
I don't even want to say the quality of, of, of resident, but it's just safer, much better neighborhoods where you would, you're less likely to be involved in, in any criminal or anything uh, or be a victim of one of those things. Um, Chikopi is an, an older neighborhood. However, you know, some people who like bigger yards and, and older homes yet in a good neighborhood, uh, that's what Chikopi looks like. And uh, of course, in Cambridge, we have uh, Hespola and we also have Silver Heights. Hespola is just off of the 401. And for those who are looking to commute uh, from Cambridge, Hespola is a good option. Um, majority of Hespola is also newer homes. So for those who are looking for homes that are less than 20 years old, you're going to have a better chance of finding something really decent in Hespola. Okay. And then for top schools, like I was just saying, uh, it really depends on what you're looking for. Uh, we have all options from public school to private schools to Christian schools to like you name it, we have it. It's just a matter of what are you looking for? Some schools are French, English, a mix of both. Uh, so, but according to, you know, by popularity, these are the top schools um, in the different regions. Um, like I was saying, like if there's something in particular that you're looking for, uh, in most cases, most people, when they're choosing a place to move to, move to they're looking at the neighborhood and they're looking at the schools. Um, and then, of course, they're deciding what else is important to them. However, if your kids are older and you could care less about what school, then that also gives you more options to be in other neighborhoods um, just as good. Like I said, especially uh, when we look at Waterloo um, and Guelph, there is no bad neighborhood like the true definition of a bad neighborhood i can't think of an area that i'll say this is a bad neighborhood when it comes to kitchen are the areas that you definitely have to be careful you have to know uh, what streets to stay away from uh, same with cambridge you have to know what streets and neighborhoods to stay away from but for the most part these regions we don't have those problematic um neighborhoods that you would see as compared to some of the larger urban areas, right? Like we can compare to some of the bad neighborhoods in Toronto because we don't have that. Most of Guelph is, is very safe. Same with Waterloo region. Um, but when we go, same with what, the city of Waterloo. But of course in Kitchener, you definitely have to know um, which areas and same applies to Cambridge. In terms of universities, we have, um, three universities in this area and we have one college. So we have the University of Waterloo that has about 41,000 students and we have Wilfrid Laurier University. So University of Waterloo and Wilfrid Laurier are next to each other. So if then they're both in Waterloo, the city of Waterloo. And you know, one of the good things about this is like if one of the family members or somebody in your family is going to university, you definitely have options. Uh, and within proximity, we also have McMaster University. Um, that's about, if you're coming from Guelph, it's about 45 minutes. But if you're coming from Kitchener, you're looking at, actually, if you're coming from Guelph, it's probably like 35 to 40 minutes. And if you're coming from Kitchener, you're looking at maybe 50 minutes. Because I actually went to McMaster University for my undergrad and I did my master's at Laurier. So I've lived in in this and I used to live in Kitchener and commute to McMaster in my fourth year okay and then of course we have Conestoga College and it has um over 30,000 students and um it's one of the top three colleges trend schools I guess ranked in Canada one also good thing is if you're looking at, a, at your home as a potential investment it's good to be in an area that has, you know, university, universities and activities because the demand for these homes will always be there. One thing we've seen is that post pandemic, universities have increased their student intake by 25%. So I think before they used to take about, you know, 25,000 students, now they're taking over over um, 30 students. Um, and what that does is, it increases the demand for housing, therefore increasing prices in these regions. So, you know, I know some people are looking for like a place to live. However, that could also be an investment. That could be the thing that you sell years from now to retire or to downsize and have some cash. So if you're looking at your home as a potential investment, this is definitely an area where prices 
over time will likely go up. And you might argue that in Canada, we don't have places, uh, places that, you know, where prices depreciate. I will tell you that we do have areas where prices are going down. You know, you know how like this trend of ours is going upwards over 20 years. We do have areas, for example, Saskatchewan is one of those markets where prices are going down. So if it's somebody who's, let's say, sometimes people in our webinars are people who are overseas and they're looking for a place to move to. I think that definitely from an investment perspective, this is a good region. So if you're thinking about moving, some of the things that you should be thinking about one is you have to confirm your timeline based on your circumstances. When are you looking to move, right? And what needs to happen for that to happen? After you do that, you have to look into your finances. I get people all the time, like all the time, who want to start looking for homes without a budget in mind, without talking to a mortgage broker. In that case, if they come to me, I will recommend them to the team of mortgage brokers and, and banks that we work with, they will go there, get pre-approved. And from there, we can determine how to help them next. Because when we start looking for homes without that pre-approval, two things happen. One, you find something that you love. That's like literally the most perfect thing you could ever have. You've looked for years, this is it. But you don't have your finances in order. You don't even know if you can afford it. So usually in that case, in, 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 the, in the markets we've been in in the last few years, it's hard to give like, you know, a condition for financing for two weeks because that's how long on average you'll take the banks to give you a pre-approval. In that case, you lose out on a home that you really wanted to have. The second thing that happens is you keep looking and you find something, you think you can afford it, but you go to your bank and you can't afford it. Say something, you know, comes up and the numbers don't work. What I recommend to our clients is get your budget going. It's like going grocery shopping without knowing how much money is in your bank account. Like who would do that, right? So I would say, you know, get your numbers um, in order. Find out the things that you can do to get a better rate. I've had clients even like sometimes in the past, um, you know, change a few things to, you know, make their application, I guess, more attractive, so to speak. For example, if you have a, um, a car loan, you can see if you can pay that off or there's ways to, you know, work some of the good mortgage brokers we work with. They'll work with you. They'll advise you to see what you can do to increase your chances of getting a better rate. And of course, in this environment that we're in where we have high interest rates, a better rate and of course an approval. I've seen people who come to me and they just bought a brand new car without knowing that that car that they just bought will impact their mortgage approval, right? If you have high payments and it, you know, it's, it's, it's a very expensive car, like those things will be factored into how much you can qualify for. Now, once you have a budget and of course your numbers in order, then you have to reach out for a personalized consultation that, um, you know, we, as I said, I'd be happy to offer that to people who are on this webinar. I think when I said that, maybe some people weren't here yet. Um, usually for people who attend webinars, because you took time out of your schedule to be here, I will offer a, a one hour consultation if you'd like me to look into your situation uh, and see how we can help you buy a home. That is something that I'm willing to do to sit down one on one and look at your numbers. Um, however, if you're looking to buy in another region, not just this one, you can also connect with other professionals, people you trust. Uh, if you don't know any, you know, if you, for example, you have a market in mind, but you don't know any professional, full-time working um, realtors, let me know. I can connect you with people who are working full-time. Um, part of the reason why I like working with full-time people is because, you know, that's their number one thing. That's, that's what they do full-time. If you work with somebody who's part-time, this is only um, a side hustle, I guess, for them. And I don't know if I would put my client in the hands of somebody who's working part-time. You know, some people don't like when I say that, but it's just the truth. And of course, after you connect with a professional who's going to help you on your home search journey, then we need to um, start searching for a home and doing a due diligence. This is where you definitely have to know what you want, stick to it. But also at the same time, you have to make sure that you're doing your due diligence. You know, and what I say here, like, you know, 
when I'm working with my clients, I will do my very best to make sure that first of all, they get a good deal. Not only that, they understand what they're buying, but not every agent is like that. Sometimes I've had people blame their previous realtor. And I was like, yes, I see why you would blame them. But I also want you to know as a person who's here on this webinar looking um, for more information and learning, I think that you're also the kind of person who's going to take matters in your own hands and know that you need to do your own due diligence because, you know, while we might, I might do my best, not every realtor is like that. You know, as I said, some realtors are part-time, some realtors are new. They don't even know what to look for. So you need to make sure that you're doing your due diligence in terms of like, you know, a home inspection. You, unless, Unless the home is like brand new, which even brand new homes will always have problems. We've seen in the news where, you know, this new builder, this happened, blah, blah. There are ways to get to get your home inspected. If they say they're holding offers and you, you don't want to give a conditional offer, there are ways to do your home inspection before that offer date comes. So always make sure in most cases, do your home inspection, get a good understanding of what you're buying, because this is a lot of money. The average price of a home in this region is somewhere between 850 to a million, depending on which city you're looking at. Why will you spend a million dollars of your money without understanding what you're buying? There've been situations where I haven't done a home inspection for my own purchase. But the reason I skip the process sometimes is because I know, like I, my eyes trained enough to be able to see things. Like I've gone, like we've been doing this for 10 years. So I am comfortable taking certain amount of risk. But if you're here and you're a first time home buyer, or maybe you haven't bought a home in a while, my advice to you is the due diligence is more important than anything you can think about. OK, um, part of the due diligence. Also, you have to make sure that as, I, as we were talking about, like, you know, mortgage approval, that those numbers are solid and that you have a firm approval from your bank, because if anything changes, that puts you at risk of being able to close that transaction. In addition to that, you also have to make sure that. If you're buying a home, you understand the neighborhood, you know what's going on. Of course, if you're working with a good uh, good professional, they will guide you. They will advise you. They will look at what's in your best interest and they'll, they will watch out for you. However, you also can do some due diligence by Googling the address, Googling the neighborhood to see if there's something that might come up that you weren't aware of. Okay. Once you find the home of your dreams, it's our time to negotiate the best terms, and of course, to close on the transaction um, and um, make sure that you move into the home of your dreams. With our clients, our relationship continues. It doesn't end there. That means that whatever you need, whatever support you need, we're here for you. And it becomes more like a relationship. Most of our clients actually are referrals and past clients because we, instead of just you know being there for that one single event, we like to have this relationship with you where it's ongoing. And because I'm also in the industry where we renovate homes and we're doing a lot of work, in most cases, we end up recommending some of our professionals to our clients and it just becomes an ongoing relationship. But you know, for somebody who's looking to buy a home, this is basically the things that you should be thinking about before you buy a home. So that's the end of my presentation. Um, this is my contact information for those who would like to connect with us. Um, now I'm going to look at what questions have been submitted. And if there's something that I haven't covered that you'd like covered, please let me know. And I will answer your questions right now, starting with the ones that um, were submitted ahead of time. Okay. So give me one second. Well, if you see me looking on my phone, it's because all the questions are being submitted um, online. And I'm just going to pull them up and answer them. Let me see. Okay, so the first question is, are homes in Guelph and Kitchener Waterloo also going through multiple bidding right now due to lower prices? I would say that we're seeing, so it's more common than it was a few months ago. We had a few months, like starting like July, August, September, October, December. It was rare to see multiple offers on a home. But come January, I've competed in, in some cases we've lost, you know, bidding wars just because, you know, we would ad we advise our clients if it makes sense to proceed with, you know, the price and if it gets out of hand. And of course, we kind of 
have to decline and keep looking. But this month of January and February, we're seeing that that multiple offer situation is coming back. It's more common now than it was in last year. Okay. Second question is, I have school going children. Which area would you suggest is better for schools in Guelph? Again, as I said, um, there is a neighborhood that has the highest concentration of schools, but it also depends on what kind of school you're looking for. Because, you know, if you're looking for a French school versus a Christian school versus a private school versus a public school versus Catholic school, like those are all different. So it depends on what kind of school you're looking for. But, you know, I would say that I would need to know what kind of school you're looking at. Some of the best schools are in different neighborhoods. For example, um, if you're in the south end of Gulf, you definitely have access to more schools. But if you wanted, you know, for example, like um, there's a there's a client of mine who ended up in one uh, what I would consider a B neighborhood. So there are A, B, C neighborhoods. So they specifically chose to go to a B neighborhood because the B neighborhood, the school in the B neighborhood had a program. I think it's international bachelor, IB program. They had the IB program in, in that school. So it really just depends on what you're looking for. They don't mind living in such a neighborhood. Uh, it's a B, it's safe, everything is good, but they want it to be close to that school. So I would say it really depends on what's important to you. And also it depends on, it's like, is it like high school? Or are we talking elementary? Because some of the best schools are in different neighborhoods. Um, basically um, based on, is it elementary or um, high school? I would say connect with me and I will see what you're looking for and I can make a better recommendation. In the last five to seven years, which region has seen more growth in terms of real estate value? Kitchener, Waterloo, or Guelph? Hmm. That's a good question. When I look at CD, so basically Kitchener, Waterloo, and Guelph, if you compare Kitchener, Waterloo, and Guelph, it's hard to compare because Guelph is just one city. And of course, we have city of Cambridge, have the city of Kitchener, and we have the city of Waterloo. When we look at which region has grown the most, I would say that Cambridge has grown the most because 10 years ago, Cambridge was a place where people didn't want to be. Like If you tell someone that you live in Cambridge, they will almost think negatively of you. And this is unfortunate, but that's just the truth. People just thought that Cambridge was bad. And now Cambridge being the center of the commute, um, the you know, the commute city, then people want to be close to the 401. And, you know, home values has gone up. Those neighborhoods are of concern have been cleaned up. There's newer homes being built, multi-million homes. Back then, to buy a home for a million dollars in Cambridge, people would have to be like, where? You know, and now it's just like any other city. So I'd say in terms of appreciation, Cambridge has gone up the most. Guelph is still, you know, more expensive than Kitchener Waterloo on average. But I think all cities have gone up really about the same. If we look at, you know, the one that has gained the most appreciation is Cambridge. And it's because back then it used to be so cheap. And now people have realized that it's actually one of the best places to be if you're going to commute to Toronto. Okay, so the next question is, I bought my first home in the end of 2021 at the peak, and I have 700,000 saved up. Plus, my family income has gone up by 50 annually since then. Can I afford to buy a freehold investment property in any of these areas? Okay, so this is one of those specific questions where like you, yes, you've given me some background information, but unless I know more, I can't really say if you can afford or not. Uh, I see that your family income has gone up by 50,000 annually, but I would also want to know what it's at right now. Like, are we talking from 100 to 150 or are we talking from 150 to 200? Because that changes um, the number. So I'd say, you know, Call me or book a consultation and I can usually go through the numbers with my experience and let you know what that will look like, okay? I'm a first time home buyer with a preschooler and I'm looking for a freehold home. What areas would you suggest in Guelph? Hmm, so this is elementary. One of the areas to be in, one of the areas that has the highest concentration of schools is the um, college area, like old university. This is a neighborhood that has a lot of schools. So they have, 
you know, elementary schools, they have private schools, they have Christian schools, there's a Christian school there. Um, they have um public school, like basically, and they also have like French, there's a French school uh, that is Catholic, and they also have a public French school as well. So it depends on what kind of school you want. Okay, but yeah, so that that neighborhood, like all the university, there's also the university is right there, right? So if you are somebody who wants to be close to schools, I think that's a good area to be in. However, if you want, for example, like the IB program, as I was saying, um, I don't know if any of the high schools in that area have the, you know, I'd say it depends on what you're looking for. Inflation is going down. What do you think will happen to mortgage rates in the next bank of Canada's meeting? So that's coming up. I think the next announcement is the big, it's first week of March. I think March is too soon to lower rates. So if I was to give a prediction, I would say maybe in the April meeting is when they will reduce rates. But March, I would predict that they will hold it where it is for another month. That's what I'm thinking. And part of the reason why I think that is because, you know, when I look at all the data and the stats and also what other economists are saying, they're predicting that right now, March is too soon to see rates come down. So maybe anywhere between April and June. That's what I'll say. Um, next question is, how's the rental market in Kitchener Waterloo? Is it as competitive as Toronto? I'm thinking of buying a rental unit soon. So what to so what to understand? Okay, anyway, so this question is about the rental market in Kitchener Waterloo compared to Toronto. So if you were to ask me, I would actually say I prefer the Kitchener Waterloo area for an investment property as compared to Toronto. And part of the reason for that is one, Toronto is just too expensive. Like to get positive cash flow in Toronto, it's nearly impossible because the home prices are just so high. And when we look at rents, our rents in Kitchener Waterloo are not low. I think when I'm looking for a place to buy an investment property, I'm looking at the relationship between purchase price and rents. And when you compare that ratio for Toronto and you look at the same ratio for Waterloo region, you'll actually see that rent, our rents are stronger compared to our purchase price. So I would definitely say Kitchener Waterloo, but it also depends on, it depends on um, another thing to like your budget, you know, like some, like I, I know for sure that in Kitchener Waterloo for 800, you can get a home that has multiple units, two, three units, but in Toronto for 800, you're probably looking at a semi-detached right? So it, it, it depends on those factors, but I would say for higher appreciation, we're seeing a lot more people move out of GTA. If you look at like appreciation over the last couple of years, you see that areas around GTA have appreciated more than Toronto itself. And the reason for that is because it's becoming normal for people to commute to work. And also with a lot of companies feeling more comfortable for people to work from home, we're seeing that, yeah, people are feeling a lot more comfortable to live outside Toronto and work in Toronto. So for return on investment, I would say that Kitchener Waterloo definitely has a higher um, return on investment. Now, that is that is what we see when we look at the data in the past. Looking forward, um, that that might change, but right now from what we see in the data, what it suggests is that areas around GTA have appreciated more than Toronto itself. That being said, I would also say, don't go too far away from Toronto because we saw people go to London, like London, Windsor, Niagara. These were very popular markets in Mar in, in um, 2021 and, and 2020. Those were very popular markets. But right now, those are also the areas that have gone down the most. Like if you look at a home in London right now, nobody's even talking about London anymore, right? But London homes have gone down so much. And one of the reasons for that is because people cannot live in London and commute to work in Toronto. So we're seeing that there's a sweet spot for sure within that one hour commute to Toronto is, is where we're seeing the market hold up. 
But if you go away from Toronto um, by, let's say, an hour or two, that it becomes too far for people to commute. So all those talks about Niagara, Windsor, and London, nobody's talking about it anymore because it's just too far. And it's interesting that, you know, you see this, like, from an investment perspective, you want to be in that sweet spot where when things go up, you're still good. When things crash, you're still okay, right? And that's what we've seen in London. The prices have gone down so much, and we don't know how long it will take for prices to recover. So I'll take one more question, and then let me just make sure that I'm not missing any questions from here. Okay. I'll take one more question, and um, we'll end this because it's we have two more minutes, okay? So I'll take one more question. If I didn't answer any of your questions, feel free to connect with me. Maybe not tonight, but tomorrow morning. And I can answer them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but yeah, the last question that I will take is, do you have any mortgage agent or property management companies you work with regularly? Yes, we do have um, both of these. And if you'd like to be connected, let me know and I can connect you, okay? So it's around 7.59. I just want to take a minute to say thank you very much for taking your time and for being here all this while. I really um, hope that what I've presented tonight will add value and that will empower you as a home buyer. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out. Um, other than that, that's it for tonight and have a good evening and take care.